This video is brought to you by Squarespace. So it is Friday, and Fridays up here at the studio mean, well, they mean two things. One, the weekend is here, and it also means mail time, where we're gonna get to look at works sent in by you. So without further ado, let's get started. We've got, we've got big mail today. Check this out, really big mail. All right, so first up, and gosh, this is a first for the show. It's gonna go wide here. So this comes to us from Wayne Melia, photographer from Victoria, British Columbia. This is a, this is actually a handmade, one-of-a-kind book. Let's see if we can get this whole thing in here. This is gonna be a stretch. So it's a box, but it's gonna open like this. And we have spread, oh my gosh, okay, hold on. Gonna have to switch out to the 12 to 24, one second. Okay, so this is called Excerpts from a Road Trip. Let's go all the way up to 12 here. And it opens like this. That is a big book. Very cool, though. Okay, so this comes with a letter. I'm supposed to read this first. And Wayne writes, Dear Ted, my name is Wayne Melia, and I am a 75-year young hobby photographer who often views your videos on YouTube. Hold to view. Open the top cover from the right-hand side, hinged on the left-hand side, and lay flat on the table, floor, desk, whatever. Open the top page from the right-hand side. Note the notch for your finger on the right will fall on the box. Lay on the top. This gives you two prints to view. Repeat, turning pages. I am not a fine art photographer. My photos are a tad on the gaudy side. To fit that genre, I am not a portrait photographer, fashion or landscape devotee. No silky waterfalls. Street photography, well, carries a connotation of grittiness, abstraction, attitude, and I don't know what, so I don't fit there. Wildlife nature, I've done a few, but birds' armpits aren't really my thing. I like people better. Guess I take snapshots. My photo hero is Jay Maisel. I have two of his books, and maybe someday I'll learn gestures. So back to doing the something. I like to print, mostly in color, because I usually see in color. Fairly good sized prints because A, I can, and B, larger prints reveal more details and texture that are lost on small, discreet, tasteful little gem. I like the word immersion. I like in your face. A zine, these prints are a little awkward to hold as a zine. That'd be about the biggest zine ever. When you have finished looking at it, feel free to do whatever you will. I am not under any illusions about priceless treasure needing to be returned or preserved forever. So Wayne, first of all, I love the book. Excerpts is wonderful. Second of all, you mentioned in your face, and I love it. It's so unique, and this is the cool thing. And so, you know, I've done a lot of these mail videos. You know, you guys are awesome. You send me really cool stuff to share on here. And oftentimes, I get emails from people kind of overthinking things, and they'll send me a message, and they'll say, well, Ted, could you could you recommend some services to get my zine produced at? And, this, and, and it's like the whole idea of a zine, and I've, I've, I've talked about this before, this whole idea of making something by hand or making it handmade. I have never seen anything like this before. It is very unique. It does get your attention. It is full immersion and is definitely in your face. To me, this is so much cooler than something that is done by machines. It's made by hand and it has that tactile experience to it. And it's something that's unique. It's something you're not going to find anywhere else. Another point you mentioned in here is Jay Maisel. I agree there. I'm a huge Jay Maisel fan myself. So if you're watching this video and you don't know who Jay Maisel is, so I'll link to him in the show description. He's a really incredible photographer, big New York name. I mean, he's he's one of the best. I'm just curious, Wayne, have you considered making one of these and sending it to Jay? There's something, now I don't know Jay, I've never met him, but something about this tells me this would kind of be right up his alley. Also wonderful in here is the descriptive text on how to actually get into this. Man, I really do love this. This is fantastic work. It's something that's presented very differently and very uniquely, and that's what I hope people get out of seeing this. It's like, you know, you gotta think in different terms. The, the, you know, the, the thing is, and this is no secret, everyone today seems to be a photographer. Everybody's got a camera camera in their phone. Everybody takes pictures. And then like a smaller segment of that crowd actually is kind of serious about it. And a smaller segment of that actually prints their work and does stuff with it. A smaller segment of that actually starts making zines or books or what have you. And that segment still is pretty overcrowded. So if you want to do things that kind of stand out, have an edge, well, really good work is part of it. I never deny that. But you also have to find a way to make it stand out a bit. There's a lot of really good work out there. I mean, look, I've done a lot of mail videos. I've had a lot of people send stuff in, but I seriously think that like you need to go that extra mile just to 
make it unique. Put some passion into it. And this this is absolutely fabulous, man. Thank you for sending this. I'll tell you a funny story. When I got this at the post office, go in to get the package, and the people who work at the post office, they're used to me by now. I've been over there for seven years, I guess, and there's been a lot of packages delivered to the art of photography. And in fact, it's funny when somebody new starts and they're like, oh, you didn't know he's on YouTube. And they're just amazed that people send work in. Well, this came in and we all thought it was like a framed print because the size. And it kind of felt like a frame on the edges because it was slightly heavier. And it was very funny. They said something to me like, oh, you're getting the whole frame this time. Anyway, Wayne, thanks for sending. This is awesome work. And since you asked for a critique in here and wanted me to be brutally honest, well, I'm going to give you a little bit of a critique. I really don't do a lot of that in here because it's a public forum. It's in front of other people and I can't talk to you directly. I can't ask you questions about what it is that you're going for. But I will say this about large scale works. They're very difficult to pull off. Yes, on the one hand, you do have this whole idea of full immersion. There's nothing wrong with that. There are artists and photographers who pull this off extremely well. However, there is another side to this. So think of the idea of context. And this is something that I've been talking about a lot in the last couple months on this channel. It's something that Ralph Gibson has talked a lot about in the interviews that I've done with him. Context is very key to photography. And when you consider the contextual element of a photograph, I believe personally, and this is what scares me a little bit about large scale, for my own work anyway, is that anybody can step up close to a print and you start to process what you're seeing in the image and you start making your own images out of that. It's another thing to frame the image in and think, how am I best going to suit this in terms of detail, in terms of geometry, in terms of shape, in terms of what is speaking in the photograph? Now, this is where it gets a little bit complicated because let's say the opposite of doing a gigantic photo would be doing a really tiny photo. The same composition probably wouldn't hold up the same in both contexts. Okay, so why is this important? Consider the composition elements for just a second. For you as a photographer, it is your call. You are the artist. You are the imagination behind it. You are the creator. You are making an image that you are defining every single square inch of that image around, all the way up to the edges and everything in between. I've done a lot of videos on composition over the years, and the edges matter in a photograph. That's where weight and emphasis can be had. It's where you can start to do something compositionally that speaks a certain way to the viewer and has a certain impact. A lot of photographers love to print really big because it does have that immersive effect. There's something impressive about it. It's just the magnitude of it all. When I was younger, that's what I started out wanting to do. I wanted to get the biggest printer I could afford. In fact, I remember like when 13 inches was kind of the biggest one that was sort of affordable. It's like, well, how come I can't go 70? I want to go bigger than that. So then you start looking at local printers who will do large format printing. Sure, it can be done, but does that mean that's the right context for a photograph? I hope you guys see where I'm going with this. Another key element with photography is being able to have something that's diverse diverse enough to go in a number of situations or a number of settings. So for instance, if you look at any major name photographer who has a career and a body of work and images that you know. So for instance, let's take Jay Maisel for an example. So Jay, you've probably seen his work in books. You've probably seen it printed on walls and galleries. You might've even seen it in a museum. You might've seen it on a postcard. Those are a number of different contexts and sizes and you need to have a successful image. Well, or let's say a successful image will work in that variety of contexts. Okay. Back to this book for a second. One of the reasons that it is so successful is because it's unique. Scale is the point here. It's a huge book with facing pages that you can navigate if you have the room or the floor space to do it. But it works really well because that was the intention of these photographs. So those are in an excellent context. Like I said, this isn't really a critique per se, but you did ask for my opinion. So there's certainly some talking points about it. And that's what I wanted to share with others. And speaking of critiques, and I just want to make this clear because a lot of times people People will send their work in and they ask me what my impressions are, what I think. This is not really an ideal format for a critique. In other words, I can't talk to you. I can't ask you questions about the work. I don't know what your intention is. I don't know what your background is. I don't know what it is that you're striving to do. So I tend to not do those in this type of video format. And I just want to say it because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings on this. What I want to do with these mail videos is for the people who have taken the time to create stuff like this that Wayne sent in that are really cool, I want to be able to feature that on this show. And I'm in, in, in this case, I think it is worth talking about it because it is just so unique. I mean, come on, what an awesome idea. I know I'm going back and forth and rambling a little bit on this, but this is such a great idea and I love these images. It would be interesting to see these at a smaller scale so I could kind of compare them even, but man, this is really nice. Wayne, excellent job. I am really into this. Oh, and I want to address one other thing. You said I am under no obligation to hang on to this. Are you kidding me? I save everything. This is one of the 
the cool things about doing this show, and you guys never see this side of it, maybe I ought to like do a vlog sometime because it might be kind of interesting. When people come over and visit the studio, like I have all the books here, and it's something that I'm very proud and very cool to be able to show because like, I don't think there's any other YouTube channels that can say this. Like, you know, I have a ton of really awesome stuff and that means I've got an awesome audience. And it also means they're real people who make things. And so it's something I'm really proud of. So I hang on to all this stuff just so you guys know. I've never tossed anything. So that's a tough act to follow, but I've got some more stuff here that I think does it pretty well. But real quick, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor this week, who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace.com. Listen, you need a website and we all know how much work that is to build and maintain but it doesn't have to be. Squarespace is by far the easiest way to build your online presence. It's also the best way to grow a business that works for you without having to write a single line of code. Do you just need a simple portfolio or a blog to showcase your work? Well, Squarespace is perfect. Featuring a drag and drop interface, it's intuitive, it allows you to build galleries quickly and update your site with ease. Are you running a business? Well, Squarespace gives you additional tools for things like appointment scheduling, private member areas, social media tools, and even advanced email marketing. Do you sell products or services? Well, Squarespace has you covered with complete tools to power your store, from merchandising to checkout so that you can sell, ship, and build your customer base. You can even sell classes or manage appointments through your website. And and with Squarespace extensions, you can easily sync with third parties to manage, optimize, and enhance your website. From social media integration to SEO, Squarespace gives you all the tools you need to grow a business that works for you. So head over to Squarespace and sign up for the free trial. Start with one of their award-winning templates and see what you can create and just how good you're going to look. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com AOP and I can save you an additional 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Just use the offer code AOP on checkout. So give it a try and see if Squarespace is right for you. And I want to give a special shout out and thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, next up is this book and a note from Mark Penartz, who is from Belgium. This is a very international show today. We've got British Columbia, Belgium, and Japan, I believe is the next one. Anyway, Mark writes, Hi Ted, thanks for your excellent work and videos on YouTube, which have given me some great advice and introduced me to many inspiring photographers. I'm happy to send you a copy of Green. It's a photo zine with 57 images made in parks and green areas in Belgium and Sweden. The idea was to give urban greenery a dreamy dimension and create images that pay tribute to silence and solitude. In doing so, I used various techniques such as smearing a UV filter with olive oil, multiple exposures, and intentional camera movement. But in the end, it's about the photographs, not the technology or the ideas behind them. I want my images to convey a feeling, although everyone may decide for themselves what kind of a feeling. Normally, I work in color as a street photographer with a preference for the abstract. This is a sidestep into near monochrome that has eventually influenced my street photography and made it even more experimental. I hope you enjoy green, best Mark. Mark, this is a beautiful collection of images, has quite a nod to pictorialism in it, and I'm really curious about your street photography because you mentioned doing this style kind of influenced what you're doing with the street photography, and I think that's amazing. I think a lot of photographers don't go with that extra step to see if they can do something new that has a different impact and an influence on a different aspect of their work. Some of the stuff we did during the pandemic with photo assignments was like that. Anyway, really nice job. Love green. Thank you very much for sending. Okay, next up, I was wrong. This is not from Japan, it's from France. This comes to us from Antoine Leblond, and the content is very Japanese, but Antoine writes, Dear Ted, you might remember my photo book about Japanese railways. Actually, I do, and it is in that stack over there. In 2017, I started a new photo book project called Manuk, about Japan as seen through the visible marks of absence in the erosive caress of time. I suppose it sounds better in French. It took about four years to find its final form, and I'm happy that I could finally publish it. I hope you like it, Antoine. Antoine, this book is outstanding. I am a huge fan of the design of this book. It fits the material of the whole Japanese aesthetic. And you guys, I think this is a big takeaway too when work is done really well like this. And I think you could make the same case for the massive portfolio that we started with. But when you consider the work as a whole, so it's not just photographs, it's the presentation, it's how they're presented in terms of form, in terms of function. This is a beautiful little book. Antoine, you should be really proud of this. And thank you very much. I'm gonna link to everybody in the show description. And I don't know if he's got this for sale or not, but this is highly recommended. So anyway, I have two more books that we've run out of time and I haven't gotten to, and I want to spend some time on them because they're really nice too. So we'll do that next week in the show. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. And until the next video, I'll catch you guys then. Later.